story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there and welcome to Call TV News on the hour with me, Sabena Izogu. Nigeria's anti graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, has brushed aside claims by the online medium that its officials are being influenced by drug charges against a suspected or theft. Jared Tenebi is a gubernatorial aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party and has been under investigation for all theft. But the medium claims that a named EFCC official has linked him with serving and former government official. The commission said in a statement that no servant or former public official is under investigation over the matter. EFCC, however, maintained that its operators are still on the case, which led to Jarrah's arrest and noted that the outcome would soon be made public. The presidency wants Fulani cattle rares to embrace Western education. It also urged them to avoid conflicts with their host communities in the run-up of the 2015 election. Presidential Advisor on Political Affairs Rufaya Akali gave this advice while receiving the leadership of the Miti Alha Social Cultural Group in Abuja. Make sure that you send your children to school. Mm -hmm. Because one of the is education is the foundation of civilization. And education is the instrument of liberation of all societies, historically and certainly in contemporary times. So if the opportunity is now, and then the transformation can start from our own homes. Because by transforming from a traditional style of taking education for granted, we can now take it as a responsibility in our families. Personally, I've been doing my best at level of promoting education at every level in my life. Maybe I'll have opportunity to say it one day, what I've been doing, apart from what is the formal thing that you see outside. Therefore, my understanding is that there must have been a breakdown of communication between the two otherwise brothers, the farmer and the caterpillar, because these are virtually two sides of the same coin. A lot of people do not understand that there are many people who are not Fulanis, but they have cattle today. Probably more than some of the Fulanis. And there are many Fulanis who do not have cattle. So the perception that every Fulani man is a cattle rearer. I don't think it's correct. That is my understanding of it. I have instances where we have leading cattle owners in northern Nigeria who are not Fulanis at all. But no matter, under normal circumstances, there should be closer collaboration between the cattle rearer and the farmer because there are a lot of benefits the farmer gains by working with the cattle rearer, and there are a lot of benefits the cattle rearer will gain from the farmer. I think we have to re-establish that relationship very quickly. The South African National Quarantine in Lagos is free of Ebola virus. The Health Ministry spokesman Dan Iwome confirmed this in Abuja. He, however, said other tests are being conducted on the unnamed South African woman who showed Ebola-like symptoms on their arrival in Nigeria. Your Bafemi Awolowo University was in the spotlight earlier this week as a result of the suspected outbreak of the Ebola through a female student who had contact with an Ebola victim in Port Harcourt. The university management addressed journalists to clear the air and give updates on the said outbreak. Rashid Rashid was there and filed in this report. As the news of alleged Ebola outbreak in Obafemi Awolowo University filtered into town, Nigerians are apprehensive and want to know the result of the test run on the suspect. The university authorities this afternoon are happy to announce to the whole world that the results of the preliminary and confirmatory test proved negative. Consequently, 
this university is Ebola virus disease free. The OAU management went further to explain the proactive measures taken by the institution to prevent Ebola outbreak in the university. It's prepared to handle cases, suspected cases, and we have collaboration with Lagos that if we have suspected cases, they will come in and assist us to transport the patient to their center and then do all necessary investigations. Maintain standard hygienic precautionary measures as established by the University Ebola Disease Surveillance Committee. Following the stigma experienced by surviving victims, the school authority announces zero tolerance on the development. This university has never and will never stigmatize anyone with Ebola virus disease. There is no way the student will come back and will not allow her to continue uh, uh, studentship. A few, because we, a few of the students that are from neighboring, especially from Liberia, we've told them not to resume and they have not resumed. As the Obafemi Awolowo University is certified free from Ebola, it is expected that Nigeria will also be free from the dreaded disease sooner than later. Rashid Rashid, Court TV News, Ileife. Residents of the Federal Capital Territory are divided on the Federal Government's insistence on the September 22nd resumption date for schools across the country. While many are demanding a return to the previous October 13 date, there are others who are convinced that the authority are on top of the situation. The report. Ebola virus was imported to Nigeria by the late Liberian American Patrick Sawyer in August. And since then, the country has had to battle with the spread. One of the decisions taken to contain it was to extend the resumption date to October 13th before it was moved down to September 22. But this man sees no harm in forfeiting a single term for the sake of saving lives. Let there be complete, complete, uh, uh, um, 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 let me say, containment, exactly, of this issue first. In, 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 in all the states, in all the cities, that there is no more individual being suspected of having the viral virus. Whether on quarantine or whatsoever record, you know, so that, that, that was how it should have been. Yeah, after this now, then you can go ahead to resume. One single academic um, term wouldn't do much damage, if I were to say. Some parents who spoke to Court TV News say government should be given a second chance. I think we Nigerians should trust the experts, that's the Ministry of Health. They are the ones who are in a position to know whether our children is still, are still at risk or the Nigerians are still at risk. If they think that uh, it is all right for schools to resume on the 22nd of September, then all of us should accept it. Because I don't think that they will advise us to bring our children together when we are still at risk of the Ebola virus disease. So I don't understand why there should be a controversy about it. Actually, the federal government has a plan for Nigerian children, and I agree with them. The Parent Teachers Association should shift stand, agree with the federal government. This student is from Anglican Comprehensive Secondary School. She says she will only return to school if her safety is guaranteed. Um, but let them be a clinic in this school in case of any student has it. So you feel safe if there's a clinic in school? Yes. For now, Nigerians will have to stick with the new school resumption date as the government say, it has no plan to revert to the old resumption date of October. But a number of Nigerians are scared that not many school children will know what to do in case of any eventuality around their school premises. The Nigerian government plans to build six new world-class medical facilities and diagnostic centre in each of the six geopolitical zones of the country. This according to the chairman of the Ministerial Committee on the Establishment of the World-Class Hospital and Diagnostic Centre, Tony Elumelu, is to ensure proper health care services for the citizenry. He made this known while speaking on the outcome of the committee's meeting with President Goodluck Jonathan in Abuja. We believe that health sector is key for the development uh, of a country. Human capital is important and you have to have a healthy workforce for a country to develop. And we are happy that this administration 
is uh, seriously committed to pushing things forward in that space. We updated the president on uh, the journey so far with two statistics of uh, the uh, projects, hospital projects in the country that have not been completed. We came up with 84 hospital projects distributed across the country. We shared this with Mr. President. Uh, our intent is to see how this committee working with this government can uh, help to bring closure in terms of completion to all these hospitals so that our people will stop traveling to India, other South Africa, other places for me. My committee believes that uh, everyone should urge the Senate, the entirety of our National Assembly, to help pass the NHIS bill into law as that will unlock a lot of opportunities in the health sector that will provide the much needed uh, effective demand of funding that will help the sector to take off. If we do not pass the NH if our Senate and the uh, House of Reps don't pass the NHIS bill, we won't achieve much. So as our senators and representatives go back to their constituents and constituencies to seek re-election mandates, we should ask them to please give us the national health bill and the NHIS that will help us as a country. We'll take a short break and when we return, Court TV News on the R continues. Stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Welcome back. Some Nigerians are reacting to the inability of authorities to settle pension arrears of so many retirees in the country. Speaking on our program, Call Digest Public Affairs Analyst Olabode Osendi says Nigeria found itself in this embarrassing circumstance as a result of bad governance. We are the best in everything in Harvard. We are the best in everything in England in Germany, in America, in places. And these people are using us to do their own good business. And we are here generating what? Rubbish. So the system we put in place, and why is that system not working, if you want to know, is mm -hmm. because there's one pillar, two couple of pillars. And I've said it, all the programs have, have appeared. You know what that pillars are? Rule of law. It is rule of law. You can trace it, and what is the cause of this cancer? Some cancer you cannot trace, you don't know how it started. Mm -hmm. But there are many cancers that at least research has shown that they know exactly that this is the cause. The cause of bad governance anywhere in the whole world is rule of law. The most nasty set of human beings are, 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 are available in other countries. I don't want to say white, black, or yellow. <laughs> but as nasty as they are, they are contained. They are contained. They cannot misbehave. They cannot afford to steal your money. They cannot afford to take your right. They cannot afford to make sure there's water's not running. There's no, there's no light. And on the Yon Yon Bon Blast, the National Hospital has handed over donations it received on behalf of the Yon Yon Bon victims to them. 3.6 million naira was dispersed to 30 survivors of the two bomb attacks that were treated at the hospital. Chairman of the National Hospital Board, Tony Ockham, personally handed over various cash sums to each bomb victim after reeling out a list of donors. The hospital management said a total of 5.6 million naira was received out of which 2 million naira had earlier been dispersed to some bomb victims. The Borno Elders Forum has raised alarm that the Boko Haram surgeons have surrounded the Borno State Capital Midiguri 
and are preparing to launch an attack to capture it. The group stated this on Thursday while calling for military reinforcement. The alert from the forum made up of the retired senior civilians and military officials came after the United States of America warned of an imminent attack on the city and analysts claimed the government risks losing control of the region. The agents France Percy reported. The militants are now said to control an area from the north around Lake Chad down to its eastern border with Cameroon and route to Bama, 70 kilometers from a degree to the south. The defense headquarters claimed that Nigerian troops had retaken Bama, but the Bornu elder said the government needed to act, asserting that the insurgents were in reach of the city. Peers grieved the Bure community of Hawa local government area of Borno State as a rampage in members of the Boko Haram attacked some people in the predominantly Christian community. Baru speaking community attacked by the surgeons are Shafa and Tessa Arade. The security source told Court TV News that the insurgents were exploiting the absence of soldiers in the communities. The source says some members of the sect invaded the Tessa Arade community and issued them a 24 hour ultimatum to convert to Islam or be wiped out. The insurgents, who were said to have stormed Tassan Alide on Wednesday evening, allegedly killed a retired military officer before leaving the community. They were said to have fled for a nearby Shafa community, where they also killed a retired army officer and a retired policeman, bringing the number of those killed to three. The source said that the Christian communities along Buyu Hawa Gakirika Mubi road and now gripped with the fears as there is a possibility that the insurgents will attack at the expiration of the ultimatum. President Gulag Jonathan says he would interfere with ongoing investigation onto the alleged links between the former Borneo state governor Modu Sharif and Boko Haram. He also maintained that the former governor was not on his entourage to charge. President Gilok Jonathan, who spoke through his spokesman, Ruben Abati, explained that at the press briefing in Abuja that the pictures which formed the basis of the claims were from an airport reception. We'll take a short break and when we return, there's more for you on Court TV News. Please stay with us. Glad to have you join us on another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. You gave me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very The PDP is a rule of right to his faith. To anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of Mosul State and cause our dog is deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9.15 p.m. on 40 News. Welcome back. Clara Corn has once again been made for the empowerment of the girl child. This according to the Oyo State Officials Wives Association organizers of the program will stem the rising tide of violent crimes against women and the girl child. Ebulomo Adekunle was at the event and brought back this report. The Kakanfo Inn Ibadan, venue of the two-day sensitization program for the empowerment and education of the girl child, organized by wives of Oyo State Government officials under the leadership of wife to the state governor, Florence Ajimobi, witnessed a huge crowd as women trooped in for common cause. The theme of the program, Girl Child Empowerment, a challenge for all, was driven from different angles by speakers at the occasion. I've never liked the idea of girl child. Please tell my father I am not a girl child. First, I am a child. Second, I am a girl. There's nothing called girl child. Let me just quickly demystify that, you know, long myth of the fact that women are the weaker sex. There's nothing like women are the weaker sex, huh? Because earlier in this year, all the most important federal government ministries in this country were led by women. The Minister of Petroleum is a woman. The Minister of Finance, woman. Minister of Water Resources, woman. Minister of Education, woman. Women Affairs, woman. Minister of Water Resources, 
woman. Minister of Information and Science and Communication Technology, woman. Apart from all those other, apart from all those ministries, other ministries are other ministries. And so if our petrol, our water, our education, our environment, our aviation, and everything that makes us significant as human beings are managed by women, we are actually not the weaker sex. We are the more powerful sex. Sound. Trust the women folk to leverage on issues, especially those that touches their hearts. The fate of the over 200 missing girls in the confinement of the dreaded Boko Haram also receives your attention. I sympathize with this country, Nigeria, and I sympathize with myself at the same time. I pray that these girls come back to Nigeria, these over 200 Chibo girls. It is a pity for the past days, 149 days ago, they have not been able to recover these children. But as we mothers continue to pray, we are all on our knees that God should please bring back these girls safe. Yes, I believe and I hope and I pray every day as a mother and as a sister. I know that they will definitely come back if something drastic is done. I know I've heard a number of times in the papers, in the media, the president and top military officials have promised, have told us they know where these girls are. So I think more efforts should be put in trying to ensure their rescue and they should be brought back safely. I believe in the strength of our military. I know that our government is doing enough and if enough is done with collaboration of, of um, other countries, I know these girls will be rescued back safely someday and I pray and I hope. Participants also speak on the significance of the program and its expected impact. I discovered that we need to empower our child girl. We need to empower them to know their rights and to be able to face challenges so that women will be some, um, they will be reckoned with in Nigeria. So that the male child will not overshadow the gift of God in a, um, in a, in a girl child. Uh, for me, it's all about the, the rights of the girl because when you give her her rights, you give her equality. You give her opportunity to, you, you, you build her up, you empower her to be whatever she's going to be in life. So for me, it's basically first and foremost about education and her rights. Protect her from the cultural barriers that prevent her from being what she is, actualize, actualizing her dreams. Gender equality and the empowerment of the girl child have been on the front burner of most women gatherings. The gathering, however, tasked participants on the practicability of the theme of the program. Ebun Lomo, Adekunle, Core TV News, Ibado. Some Nigerians have condemned the ban on formal a popular skin delicacy consumed mostly in southwest Nigeria. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Akumi Additional, is set to have banned the consumption of the meat. The Lagos based lawyer, Mohamed Fawaimi, says the ban on Pomor is significant and a ridiculous reform policy being carried out by the federal government. Mohamed challenged the minister to produce evidence that the consumption of Pomor has reduced the number of leather available for production of leather products. In the last 20 years. He advised the minister to reverse the policy, which it's because uh, a major, it has become a major source of relief to masses who cannot afford the sorted meat consumed by the elites. Do join me at the top of the hour for more. I am Sabena Izoku and thank you very much indeed for watching.